So when I initially wanted to do a zero to hero playthrough, I thought it was going to be a lot less annoying than it actually is, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I did complete quite a bit of the core game prior to Heart of Thorns being released, which involved multiple legendaries. I had Moot, I had Eternity, and other prestigious items. The thing is that it's been so long since I actually leveled a character this way. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's just different than I remember it being, and not just by a little bit. Captain's Log, Episode 1. So up to this point, I have played this account for about 8 hours. And the first day was kind of nostalgic looking through the character menu and getting all my keybinds set up since I haven't actually done that in like, I don't know, 11 years. The first thing I really noticed, to be honest, was how much stuff was actually locked behind leveling up. With the removal of the daily login rewards that we used to have, there's really no assistance to your account until you hit level 80. I also learned about the importance of the adventure guide which is basically a fast track way to gain levels. Ideally, I would be able to score some sick XP boosts from Heroes Banners, the Guild Tavern, as well as food, but to be honest, I'm not really in that big of a rush to get to max level. Instead, I'm more focused on map completion, as well as capitalizing on the World vs World Mist Rush bonus that's going on. Up to this point, I've completed Radisum, Metrica Province, Brisbane Wildlands, and Queensdale, each taking me about an hour and a half since I'm using the Tekkits, Noob Don't Got No Mounts, Trail Pack, which I think was last optimized before mounts were in the game. Speaking of these trails, this gives me a chance to highlight a great resource for new players that they often don't use, but I literally use it all the time. And this isn't going to be super comprehensive, so if you aren't interested, it'll be over in like a minute. And before I take a big dump on the wiki, let me say that the Guild Wiki is great, and Guild Wars 2's wiki is one of the best resources available to the community, and it's actually better than many other games' wikis. So all you need to do is type into your in-game chat slash wiki, and then whatever you have a question about, and it'll automatically pull up the page for you. I use this for event timers by using slash wiki space ET all the time. That being said, not having to cross-reference a map on a wiki and instead having an in-game overlay that literally tells you where to go or what path to follow or where the collectible items are is much better. Initially, when I started fooling around with overlays, I was using Taco and that's fine, it works. And I finally just bit the bullet and downloaded Blish HUD, which let me tell you is an awesome piece of software that complements the game so well. Uh, Tekkit has an overlay pack that is a slower pace and perfect for people who don't have everything unlocked. Meanwhile, for accounts that are more flushed out, there is Tez Trails, which has a Skyscale and Griffin pass set, and it really speeds things up. Um, I use that one for my map comp on my main account. There's a bunch of other add-ons that Blish can help you with. They can help you find items instead of using Guild Wars 2 Efficiency. There's a change character add-on. I'll throw a link in the description for those who are interested in Blish Head. Anyway, I wanted to get into World vs. World so I can capitalize on the whole mist rush going on, and then I realized that I was locked out until I hit level 31, which I don't remember being the case back in the day. Fortunately, after a couple of map comps, a little bit of crafting, I was level 31 in about 5 hours of gameplay. Now, I'm not really a big World vs. Worlder, nor do I really recommend getting involved in World vs. World on a level 31 with trash gear. However, I will eventually need World vs. World currency to get the exotic gear that I need to raid. So incorporating World vs. World into your gameplay loop is useful even if you do only attend World vs. World during bonus events. But because of said trash gear, I just ended up getting work endlessly by basically everything in sight. You're a victim! Here we go, CSI. I only ended up spending about 20 minutes in the game mode, followed a tag around a little bit, and overall it was more or less a giant waste of time at this stage in the game. Once my level is higher, gear is better, I'll be more effective and I'll be able to kind of solo stuff to maintain my participation. 
I also try to get involved in a guild and well more leech the guild buff from the tavern and I'll tell you about that in a minute. I work through the first couple of story chapters. The personal story is not really that important especially these days but the character adventure guide has some items locked behind completing certain story sections. So I just skip all the dialogue, blast through it and effectively was close to level 40 by the time I was doing level 20 story. So difficulty was non-existent. If the personal story led me through a map that I haven't been in yet, I would map comp that map. That's how I ended up in Queensdale. This isn't the most effective way to do things. It's not horrible. Uh, eventually we want to get to 100% map comp anyway. And in my normal account, I normally do map comp. So I'm not really opposed to it. But seeing as the adventure guide is map locked to volumes, it is way more efficient just to keep moving forward with the level area and keep completing those achievements instead of doing maps in order. It seems to be a reliable way to level up and maintain your level as you progress, as well as give you some decent funds if you gather as you go. In the background video, you might notice that I'm constantly gathering stuff, which is something I don't normally do. And the sole purpose is to get enough starter funds so that way I can afford level 80 gear when we get there. Since I don't wanna artificially break these level lockouts, I have purposely not used any of my boosters Though if I were you and you didn't make all except maybe one of your characters on your account, you probably should. I've filled all five of my characters on this account, one of each race, and I chose Guardian, Ranger, Revenant, and Necromancer for my alts. Though as this account becomes more funded and gold to gems becomes an option, I will be getting the last four character slots. And once I hit level 80, I will be using some of those boosters to set up alt parking on these alts. But for the most part, I'll be on my Mesmer, Mr. Rat himself. And before I get into the comments and questions, I had an interesting predicament. I needed a guild, mostly for the guild experience boost that you could get from the tavern. The upgrade for the tavern isn't really that expensive, so, but typically higher level guilds have that available. I was hoping that the community would snatch up a new player like me in an instant so I could use that EXP buff to level up quicker. Uh, so I asked around in map chat, asked in squad chat, even made my own LFG posting um, with no luck at all. Nobody cared. So I finally went to the guild recruitment tab and saw this knowing what must be done but unsure if i had the strength to do it i reached out they really wanted me to get on their discord and they are a 100 percent rep guild so i was already like damn bro this guild is kind of gay out a lot of rules and the worst part is they didn't even have the tavern leveled up for the buff i needed i feel really bad for lying to them but i only did what i had to do the following morning, I saw another guild advertising in the guild recruitment tab. I joined them before departing this high requirement guild and boom, I got my experience buff. I also got my first 100 achievement points, which scored me one gold, which will be useful later. And I'm still deciding on what gear set to actually get first. With the leveling process, I'm focused purely on power and in all likelihood for initial strikes and raids, I'll be playing a power DPS chrono setup with quickness and alacrity DPS as an alternative build since they use the same gear. Uh, though for ascended gear for fractals, I'll likely be getting a set of gear necessary for Condi Virtuoso. And just so that way I could blast through tier one, two and three fractals until I can effectively farm challenge modes and tier fours, but that's pretty far down the road. At the time of making this video, my character is level 41 and we have a total of about eight hours played on the account so far. So let's get into some comments and the first one's going to be a little bit spicy. Let him cook! Elementalists, I got a couple of comments about stop hating on elementalists and it works just fine and stop discouraging new players from playing elementalists. I have two elementalists on my main account. I have 400 hours across both of them. It's not my highest played, but I know about elementalists. I've played Catalyst, I've played Tempest. And in fact, I used to play Staff Tempest sometimes as a DPS for my static raid back when it was 
the only viable DPS class like seven years ago. So believe me, I know about Elementalist. The reason why I and many other people don't recommend Elementalist is because unless you are about that life, you are going to be mediocre. The DPS builds are selfish. They're reliant on everybody else to carry the boons, provide stab, and so on. The Power Catalyst uses sword. Power Weaver uses sword. Condi builds do less damage than Virtuoso, and that build has significantly higher access to CC, utility, and higher damage than the Condi Elementalist builds. For the Power builds, the Power Vindicator does 200 less damage than Power Weaver, and it is significantly easier to play with a lot of that CC and utility baked into the kit. I don't just hate on Ellie's because it's a meme or because I'm mean. It's because when you build a group comp and you have Ellie's, the boon DPS and full DPS need to carry for what the Ellie lacks. Even Heal Tempest lacks CC in comparison to Heal Druid, Heal Scourge, Heal Alak Chrono, while providing pretty much the same amount of healing. Yeah, it has some nice auras every now and then, but it doesn't compare. Realistically, the class needs some work. Either boost the DPS for the amount of skill it takes to perform, which by the way, Arena Net will never do that. Or rework their utility skills to provide group support outside of the Tempest specialization. When encouraging newbies to choose a starting class, I encourage what is currently or has historically been strong in in-game group content. And the last thing you want is to level up your character, make it your main, and then have your main class be less than ideal and hard to build groups around when you do reach the end game. It's not because I hate it, that's just the way it is. And I'm not immune to these rules. For instance, look at the alts for the zero to hero that I picked. I picked Guardian, Revenant, Necro, and Ranger, with the primary being a Mesmer. All of those classes have extremely valuable builds when you're building groups. And my second most played class after Guardian on my main account is actually the Warrior. And unfortunately, outside of DPS, Warrior is not that great either. It's still better than Elementalist in terms of reliability, but not really. And before we move on, I want to just say if you want to play it you can but after you fail enough cc bars and fractals or raids when the heal support and alack dps are more or less supposed to carry them you'll see why i don't recommend elementalist moving on flyboy asks what is one thing you should never miss when clearing a zone so for core maps you are basically just grinding through them i try to hit gathering nodes across the path that i'm map comping on if you want to participate in meta events when they're up and just kind of work through them. Once you break level 80, there are a few zones that you want to constantly revisit or focus on certain achievements that will make your life easier, mostly in Ember Bay and Draconis Mons. For Draconis Mons, the Druid Stone achievement is a pain in the butt, so getting started on that and consistently working on it while you work on other goals is important, even though it's annoying. In Ember Bay, working your way through the Collect X number of coins, Scavenger Hunt achievement is also kind of the same way. This is going to be more important for the return to achievements when we want to get our legendary amulet and while we're stacking currency to unlock the sky scale. Valbrand asks, is there any possibility that I will be making videos on world vs. world gear and build videos? So I am not a big world vs. world player. Unfortunately, due to the limited time that I play, it just isn't as rewarding for me as it is for some people. My play times are far from peak hours, so I end up just roaming, flipping cam, and occasionally running with zergs, tagging up, or, or fight groups when they are running. But because my playtime isn't really fixed, it's hard to get involved in that community. And I don't really think I'm qualified to make meaningful videos on that topic without devoting a significant amount of time to that game mode. Gildjen and Valoon are larger creators that have PvP and World vs. World videos. If you are interested in supporting a smaller creator, there's also this guy by the name of Pseudos Build Wars 2, whose content might be more your speed for world vs. world stuff. I'll end this question with the favorite answer of ArenaNet. It is not off the table, but is not something we are focusing on currently. This isn't really a question, but the homie Pied Piper shared his experience working through the game without rushing ahead to unlock stuff, and I wanted to speak on it for a second. Um, I've noticed that many tips from experienced players end up rushing people into things before they're really ready. Guild Wars 2 really has a trash 
slash tutorial system where it doesn't really exactly explain anything. So instead they just incrementally introduce new things to you until you have this account with all this stuff unlocked. And like I mentioned earlier, the main surprise or shock that I'm having with this playthrough is just how much different it actually is from a fully unlocked account. Having an account that is partially progressed or is still missing aspects definitely does feel a lot worse than playing on a fully unlocked account. But in the same sense, just automatically unlocking everything one by one and skipping over everything else can be overwhelming for somebody who's new. One of my colleagues did try Guild Wars 2 and basically got rushed through everything in the game. He bought End of Dragons, he unlocked all the mounts, and he got told to do X, Y, and Z because that's the best content to do. And he literally just got confused and quit because he didn't understand what the point was. He isn't dumb or new to MMOs, it was just information overload. So I think that the way that you decided to play the game is definitely correct. And with that, I want to thank everybody who dropped a comment showing support and excitement, even all of the salty elementalists. It's not your fault that the class sucks. It's not my fault. Blame Marina Net. And shout out to all of those people who are subscribed. And if you want to support this channel, consider subscribing, dropping a comment, and visiting on the next one. Thanks again, and I'll see you on episode two.